uh, remotely. Oh. Okay, good evening and welcome to the July 19th, 2021 Board of Selectmen's meeting. First on the agenda this evening is an executive session. Chase, do you want to read the? Yes. Um, executive session per MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. And we will adjourn into open session after that. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. You made you a made motion. It. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> Chase, how do you Oops. vote? Yes. <laughs> Mary? Yes. Ian? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. I know. Welcome. To join a conference now, please enter a meeting number. Feel like I'm if you are the meet. Drying out. You back from Hampton? Did you get any good weather? Yeah, it was beautiful. It was 85 in the sun. Friday was good. Yesterday was a little damp. Oh. But it was good. Considering what they were forecasting, it was good. We all set, Jeff? No, just got to. We're waiting on Jamie. Still to pop in. Sorry, just give it a second. And, uh, Until 6.30 anyway.
one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. We will have public service announcements. We will have a moment of silence, department reports from fire, police, town administrator, several action items, consideration of allowing a second part-time police officer, consideration on the appointment of Duran Dupree to the Cultural Council, consideration of the appointment of James Louriakis as labor driver in the Department of Public Works, consideration of possible action on the resignation of Joni Light, from the Personnel Committee, consideration and action on auction items for the Department of Public Works, consideration of action on a hawker and peddler license for Aliyah Karimi of Southwestern Adventure. Then we have old business, new business, correspondence, approval of minutes, citizens forum, and then a request for executive session. And from that, we will adjourn from executive session. We will not reconvene. Okay, public service announcements. Ian, do you have anything? I have none. <coughs> Mary? No. Jason? I have none. Okay, and I have nothing. Could we please have a moment of silence for all those affected by COVID? Okay, thank you. Okay, department reports, fire department, Chief Gosso. Good evening, Good long evening. time no see. <laughs> uh, you have my reports for the months of May and June. Um, been a busy couple of months for us. Uh, the comparative numbers uh, for the month of May were 69 calls more than May of last year. And for the period January 1st to May 31st, we're plus 134 calls this year. In June, we're 73 calls plus over last June. And for the period January 1st to June 30th, we're uh, 208 calls ahead of last year. I attribute most of that to last year when COVID really hit, nobody wanted to go out of the house. Um, I think. That's probably a significant part of that increase. Um, I, I'm also seeing that we are doing many more calls per shift on average than we've had in, in the past. It just seems like there's a lot more call volume in general. So, For any um, particular reason or just? It, it runs the gamut. Uh, the, the past couple of months we've been busy with car accidents and, and actually structure fires. We've had two or three structure fires in the last couple of months. Vehicles into buildings. Uh, which is not a, a, a common occurrence, but happens a, a occasionally. So, um, but no, nothing, you know, nothing drastically uh, stands out. So, okay. that's all I have. Okay, comments, questions from the board. Did you want to talk about the hydrogen issue? Oh yes, let me mention that. Thank you. Uh, last week we had an incident at uh, OFS. Um, the hydrogen company arrived to fill the hydrogen supply tank. Um, and due to something in the, uh, the atmosphere, whether it was the relative humidity or the temperature or a combination of both, the pressure rose in the delivery truck, uh, which created a pressure release and a, a, a small bang, which can be described as an explosion. There was a small amount of fire. Um, the driver did sustain a minor burn to his face. He was treated. Uh, at the scene by uh, my paramedics and refused transport. Um, the, the vehicle was made stable and um, the technicians from the hydrogen company arrived and secured the vehicle and ultimately made the delivery and removed the vehicle, so. Okay, but Chief, everything worked the way it was supposed to work. Everything did work the way it was supposed to. The pressure relief valve did exactly what it was supposed to do and it did cause a boom. So I, I know there were some residents, especially on Whittemore Road, who, who felt it and were concerned, but uh, there was really, it was really an isolated incident that, that was contained to Right, that, and that people area. do have to understand, we do have protocols for incidents like this and other incidents that are unexpected. Yes. I just had a follow-up question. Yeah. So the, with the amount of humidity that we have, 
is that hydrogen company under any kind of duty to follow a certain protocol itself to ensure that whatever is in the atmosphere you know doesn't happen again because i mean we have a lot of humidity right now yeah th they were following their procedures to to the letter okay. it, it was an anomaly that they they really didn't have an explanation for other than it was an anomaly okay so they didn't see anything negligent in the way no that absolutely not okay. absolutely not they followed protocol as they were supposed to before during and after the incident Thank you. Yeah, because they all have protocols that they have to follow. Which Absolutely. Yeah. Willy nilly do what they want. And and the, the, the staff from OFS was, was absolutely phenomenal uh, with their help and their support. Uh, they they couldn't have been more uh, outgoing with, with what can we do to help. Yeah. So uh, kudos to them as well. And it was quite a boom. Yeah. <laughs> Woke me up. <laughs> and I don't wake up easily. Anything else, Chief? Uh, no. The Ian, anything? Truck. Oh, Jeff keeps reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the new fire truck is in Walpole. Um, they're doing the final, uh, uh, putting the final touches on that. And I'm hoping to have it uh, within the next couple of weeks okay. in town so that we can put our equipment on it and begin training on it. And then uh, we will schedule a day where we can have the public come out and uh, see it, a walk, do a wash down uh, so that everybody can see it. Okay. Anything else for the Chief Mary? Mm -mm. Chase? Nothing. Jamie? <laughs> he's got a sound off, but he's shaking his head. Okay. No, I have a lot of small children running in the other room, Mary. <laughs> so I'm trying to keep it quiet. <laughs> okay, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. Okay, next we have Police Department, Chief. Good evening. Start with May's uh, reports. You have a copy of the reports. Yes. Um, you can see uh, we're just like the fire department here. In May, we're up 944 calls compared to same time last year. You see a sign uh, for majority of the calls that are in front of you. You see those all the calls are going up. The only thing that's really going down is the business and uh, house checks. And I just relate that to you know when. When nobody was out and about, we were doing more checks. Mm. And now that everybody's out and about, we're making more arrests, we're stopping more cars, going to more crashes. So for calls, yep, we are, we're quite a bit up. For uh, operations, during, during the month of May, uh, our school resource officers, for the first time, they put together a, a public safety day, which was very successful at the junior high. We had the state police come up, the regional uh, SROs came up and the kids came out, got to see our equipment, got to see the drone operate. And um, that was a very good day for the school. We worked together with the school on that, so that was. Was that only at the junior high? Just at the junior high, yep. Did you deem that was an appropriate age group for that? Yeah, it was like seven, seventh, uh, well, the seventh and eighth graders were out there. I mean, they looked like they really, really enjoyed uh, yeah. the time that they had out there, so it was good. First time we've done it. The SROs put it together, so I thought they did a great job with that. Uh, for training, a couple uh, things that I think were pretty significant was uh, Sergeant Murray and went to, she's a newly promoted sergeant. She went to a frontline one week school in uh, May for frontline supervisor school. And um, Lieutenant Lombardi also went to a mid management school, and we had um, some regular training going there. And that's that's the highlights for May. You have any questions on May? Any questions on May? June, June, we're up uh, 656 calls for the month compared to the same time last year. Everything is uh, consistent with uh, May. The uh, same things they're going going up. House checks go down. Um, operations. We had a couple significant uh, events take place. We received a letter from the Mass Police Accreditation Commission that certified Disturbers Police Department for safe police and uh, safe police and for safe communities, which allows us to get federal funding. So that was uh, pr pretty good that we were able to meet those standards. Now I'll relay that back to our accreditation. So, uh, and then the other thing was the first time we've even placed through New England Associations of Chiefs of Police 
we took second place for the community completion award for the year of 2020 which was pretty good we've entered in that quite a bit and this is the first time we next year will be first so this this year we took second so nice. very good moving up we were able to get the boat out and um uh, started the boat patrols because um, memorial day we were rained out so we didn't get it out like we usually do um again sergeant murray did a two-week school uh, in june as well for frontline super supervision and uh that's that's about it for highlights for the month of june what's a 209a order it's a restraining order okay that's what I so there's 209a's and 250 ad's one's a restraining order and one's a harassment order uh, but the 209a's are the ones that we highlight in, in, in the report and that means you know if somebody gets a restraining order against somebody we go we have to serve it in hand and have them sign off on it yep so. ian any questions as far as the safe police or the second place what metric do they use do they rate you by what do they use to rate the town for getting the safe second place yeah like so there was they had to come oh for the, oh, the ward second yes place. yeah you know what we had to do is we have to create a packet and uh, uh like a 10 it was a 10 page 10 or 12 page a report that we sent off to them and they go through it it's what we'll put in there is our pictures off facebook what we do um policies things like po that, yeah. policies uh newspaper clippings anything community police and related we put it into one report and we send it off and that's how they grade it based off of what we we send them another thing we did do which i didn't mention was uh we did another coffee uh with a cop over at the sawdust cafe and that was another successful community policing yeah. event. How many people um, showed up for that? Um, while I was there, well, just while I was there, and I didn't stay the whole time, there was at least a, a dozen or so people that came through, said hi. We had our motorcycle over there. We had the state police over there as well. So throughout, and I think they did it three or four hours. So uh, it was a pretty good event. People, mm. uh, we got a lot of positive feedback for that. And it's just that the Stardust donated the coffee and people just come and talk and I ask us questions. I assume kind of things help with this award. Absolutely, yeah. That's yeah. that's that's the stuff that community. you know yeah. keeps us in in contact with the community and yeah. puts uh, names to faces when the community members come talk to the police officers. They say, "Oh, you know, I I recognize you now. Now I know what you look like." So it's it's good. Chase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple things. We we should send because we sent a letter to Sturbridge Coffee House. We should send a letter to Sawdust to thanking them for, you know, hosting that event. Uh, how was the car theft been? Is that kind of subsided a little bit? Or are they still? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the car theft that was going on. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. It's, knock on wood. Yeah, we haven't been hit uh, yeah. lately. We did get a four wheeler stolen the other night. Yeah, uh, over the weekend. But other than that the the car thefts i actually haven't heard much from other communities either so um hopefully they're on a sabbatical and <laughs> found some other hobby <laughs> moved <laughs> south because yeah. last yeah. summer it was, it was bad. Bad. Yeah, yeah, really bad. A, i think i want to see just off the top of my head i think we had about 30 cars stolen last year yeah. so yeah. take your keys out of your car lock your doors yeah. uh, i put it in, in the faraday box yeah. in the house yeah. Tell the community. Yeah, right. <laughs> they're not, not going to go in your house again. And they don't know what a Faraday box is. Flower, flower bowl. <laughs> Can I? The alarm will go off. There, yes. Um, this is just a little bit off subject, but I know the um, PM Mass is coming up. Yep. There's a much fewer bikers actually leaving from Sturbridge this time, it's my understanding. Yeah, we just had a meeting today on it actually with PMC and this. Um, so it's it's going to be not non traditional. Of, right. not, there's no starting point, which makes. No ceremony. And no, no, nothing Friday night, right. Saturday. Everybody's, it's going to make it complex. So we still have to have our staff out there. Everybody's going to leave from the hotels that they're staying at yep. at various times. We've encouraged a half hour window. Get up and get out because we'll have the ramps, Close. people stationed at all the roads and stuff because there's still probably going to be a significant number of people. So we still want to have the police officers and the CERT team out there helping to block the roads. But uh it could it could vary it's kind of nice when they all leave at one time because then you know exactly yeah. now they're leaving from this hotel that right. hotel they're coming from Spread all out. over town so it's gonna uh, we'll, we'll do it but it's just gonna be a little unique this year so okay chief i noticed a lot of uh, both months unlicensed operators 
yeah they're 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 out there they just um sometimes what happens is um you know the registry i'm not going to blame all in registry but mm. people forget to renew their licenses but fortunately with the uh, it that we have this day and age with the smartphones and stuff a lot of our officers will allow them to go ahead on their phone right then and there mm. and uh renew their license but sometimes mm. It may be that time, like every five years, I think it's every five years or every two licenses, you have to go back in person. Ten years, right. every, Ten. every two licenses. Every two licenses mm -hmm. and get, get your picture, picture taken, taken and stuff. So when that happens, unless they can get a licensed operator, mm -hmm. um, they have to get their vehicle towed. And, but um, the registry sometimes, you know, they don't, they don't send out the um, notifications or people move and yeah, yeah. people move. It doesn't get forwarded. So. I check a lot of licenses and I see a lot of expired IDs yeah. the last year more so I think because people aren't well, the paying attention because the registry was closed. And they came out with some extensions for some stuff, right. registration, yeah. and stickers, yeah. all kinds of different stuff, but that's kind of all gone away now. So everybody's got to be current with your license. So check your licenses. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Don't get pulled over. Okay, Jeff, do you want to hold your report while the chief sure. does I'm a sure. consideration and possible you, action? One last. Oh, sorry. You have a wiffle ball tournament for the kids coming up, right? Yes. My two, I didn't know if you wanted to plug it. Oh yeah, sure. Um, yeah. I think it's scheduled for the 28th. I just, uh, just with something new we're trying this year. It's called the Wiffle Ball Wednesday. Uh, the police officers are going to go down with the command staff, and the school resource officers are going to go down to the fields and. And play wiffle ball against the kids. They have to sign a uh, a waiver through that we had made up a waiver, just waiving them from liability. But it's gonna, yeah. I don't want anybody getting hit with the wiffle ball too hard. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> are your kids participating? Yeah, they're gonna go. Know. Yeah, so play, play off on the fast. It's the first time we're trying it. I when I was googling community policing events last year, uh, it came up, and that's right around when COVID happened. So we put it on the back burner, and we're gonna try it this year. And if it's successful, maybe we'll do it a couple more times before. Uh, school gets back in session, and I think it'll be a great uh, community contact for the kids. Oh, yeah, the kids will love it. Yeah, so uh, the 28th, and you can Officer Phil, Philip Derry is the one that is uh, coordinating that event. And what age group uh, are we talking about? Uh, I think about? we went for fifth and sixth graders. Yeah. We might have been fourth, fifth, sixth elementary. Maybe someday we'll do the the. Police versus the adults in town. Oh, <laughs> then you really do need <laughs> the fire. You really need the liability for that. Fire, fire. Yeah. yeah, that'd be yeah. a good one. Yeah, <laughs> I'll film it. <laughs> All right. Okay, your request. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm asking the board tonight if we can approve a second part-time police officer. Uh, I I don't know if you got the memo here, but I kind of laid out. You know, over the many many years, Chief Ford had asked for additional patrol mm -hmm. officers. And uh, we got a couple school resource officers, and um, our demands keep going up. We don't have officers, and what, what I find us doing is we're forcing our patrol officers to go out on a boat. They either have to come in on before their shift or uh, stay after their shift to go on a boat patrol, or if somebody calls out sick, we've got to force people in. So I was hoping, without having any budget increases, add an additional patrol officer who right now I'd like to add um, Jeff Lavalley, bring him back. He's he's asked if he can come back as part time. He's fully trained, certified. Uh, it's not going to cost anything out of our budget. We budget for part time police officers. It's a non benefited position. They're filling in and just trying to. I'm trying to eliminate the as much. And I, I did speak to Jeff Lavalley, and you know, told him and the other part time officer their focus is going to be on this type of stuff where. Uh, you're going to go out and do the boat patrol. The community wants the boat underwater. The lake community certainly does. And um, so that's going to be their focus. And in the winter time, or when the boat's not out, they can help fill in shifts when somebody's on vacation or, or, or whatnot. So we have the money in the budget. It will be an extra person to help us out. And uh, I think it will go a long ways with the uh, other patrol officers. Any questions from the board? Comments? I just think it's good that we have someone that's been a police officer right. you know, for 20 mm -hmm. plus year that's going to do it. Yeah. Okay, and so the money's already in the budget. We already yeah, we budget for the parts. We, we, we have money set aside, separate money for the, uh, the part time positions that's already there. But what happens with us 
um, every year consistently, somebody leaves and there's money that is still in the salary and wages, that just means I got to monitor where we are with that with that money. So like right now, Jeff's position is vacant. So his salary is still there. So if I had a part timer that could help fill in those shifts, that money can just is still going to come out of the salary and wages account. So that part time rate is, is obviously cheaper than paying a, another yeah. full time officer well, overtime or anything like correct. that, right? Yeah, it will still will still just for union purposes. The full time officers will always have the opportunity gotcha. to do that first because it's contractual. Yep. However, if they don't, I'd rather have somebody say, "I'll do it," and yes, I'm going to pay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm going to pay him straight time to, to go out there and, and do the do the boat or do a patrol shift or mm -hmm. uh, even for that matter to help out with uh, the details in town. Sometimes we can't even fill the oh, construction details. So, yep. Okay, and all this information, I'm sure we'll see again come budget time. Yes, yeah, yes, I am um, working with Jeff and we're going to try to come up with some type of strategic plan, hopefully, to uh, come back. So. And I, I don't know, if, I, I didn't put up to have Jeff appointed tonight. I don't even know if that's possible to do that, but um, I, I didn't put it on there because I didn't want to put the cart before the horse. So um, I, I will leave that up to the board. Well, we can make a motion to approve the position and then you can present the candidate after that. Okay, next, at the next meeting? Yeah, or, uh, I mean, we could do it tonight. He's a, an existing- He's entity. a known entity. He's a known entity. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I would. But did you already, so nobody in the union wanted it? Nobody in the union wanted it. I'm sorry. They're, we, they're full time. They're full time, okay. Yeah. So he, he retired, he's gonna come back yeah. out of okay, retirement and just do, okay. a, do yeah. a part time. Yeah. Okay, so somebody want to make the motion then to appoint I'll make Jeff Lavalley as part-time police well, we officer. Do the, we want to do the position first, first, right? Yeah. So I'll make the motion to authorize the creation of a second part-time police officer. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, that's five to nothing. Okay, now to appoint Jeff Lavalley. I'll make a motion to appoint Jeff Lavalley as a part-time police officer in Sturbridge. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, again, five to nothing. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. You too, Chief. Okay, now, Jeff, Town Administrator's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my report's in the packet. Mm -hmm. um, just a couple, let me see if I can find it again. Find it again. Um, Lieutenant Marinelli's last shift is on the end on the 21st, 22nd at 7 a.m. at the department. So if you want to go wish him well at the end of that shift, uh, it's open. The date of it again? The 22nd. Okay, it's on the thing. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the Shampo Road Bridge Project, uh, MassDOT has scheduled a public hearing on that project. Unfortunately, during your August 2nd Board of Selectmen meeting, um, we do anticipate some public comment, uh, particularly since you know that bridge provides a direct connect for a lot, some residents over there and they're gonna to have to now bypass and go a different route. So we expect some questions and comments. Um, Butch Jackson will be sitting in on that public hearing for us. Uh, and MassDOT has offered to meet with the Board of Selectmen separately to go over the project if you would so wish at some future date. Um, the Equestrian Center project, um, they anticipate getting us a host community agreement to look at, and the bylaw should be uh, available for you all in its most recent final form for your consideration in a week or so. That will get it to you. Uh, they're gonna start planning public information meetings uh, for the community in the next, uh, in August. So we'll have a list of those events. And they'll come back and meet with the board and, and answer questions. They do have, uh, they have been meeting with staff to go over where they are and to gather up the questions that they expect to be asked during regulatory permitting, like wetlands and planning and, and those kind of things. So uh, that project is moving. Um, so you'll see that as we enter the late summer and early fall. Um, the senior center meetings, uh, we've had two so far. Uh, they've gone well. We've had great conversations, about 50 people total so far. Um, we have two more scheduled, August 11th and August 26th. We'll get that information to the board on the, on the dates. At some point, perhaps the board would like, and based upon some conversations we've had before, a public hearing 
before the board so we can get some direction as staff on which option would be the most preferred uh, you've heard from the study committee that 70 seater is the most preferred at this point but there was a desire for the board to have their own public hearing and uh, perhaps make a recommendation or send some other uh, send a couple to town meeting we just you know I think that's for you all to decide but uh, sometime in the next month maybe schedule something like that um, we can meet again and discuss it more on August 2nd um, the weather has been wet um, and as we've talked about during the creation of the capital budget we did have lightning strikes on buildings this weekend so there was some damage at a couple of the buildings we will be filing a claim Robin is trying to get those bids out because we do have to bid the project it's a hundred thousand dollar deal to do the lightning protection the radio tower was done um, that was a one-off uh, that we could do but the other buildings themselves that has to be bid out so we hopefully sooner than later to get the lightning protection installed uh, the wastewater plant took a hit DPW took a hit um, so we're, we'll be filing a claim with the insurance company so okay any questions on the report comments I just had a question with the equine center are they going to give uh, another presentation to the board or is this going to be just strictly the bylaw that's presented no they'll do do a, car, a new presentation they've Good. got a lot of new information uh, a lot of questions have been answered but not uh, not all of them mm -hmm. but I think access has been answered um, and some other things have been answered cool Good. yeah so um, circle back to as we talk about big projects the warehouse project in Charlton the two of them we submitted comments I don't know if the board wants to give staff more direction or the board wants to somehow have some feedback to to me on what's next for you all we've not heard back from MassDOT on our comments the Charlton Planning Board did have public hearings on both of the projects um, the non Amazon one they got a special permit for the height of the building but the traffic issues through MassDOT are still at MassDOT. Uh, and the Amazon public hearing is still going on. Uh, Gene Bubon has been uh, attending those remotely. And the Charlton Planning Board staff know th knows that we are participating in those meetings. So if there's any direction or any questions or any particular. What was, what was the, the consensus of those of those hearings in the public what was the public out was there public outcry was there support I mean does Gene have an opinion on where they think Charlton's going with it are they supporting it or on the Amazon yeah we don't know it yeah. got very late on the non Amazon one yeah. so I think uh, they'll have more public hearings over the next couple of weeks I'll get you those dates Thank in, you. Uh, in the links yeah, but Ian, to, oh, go ahead, Mary. to answer your question, though, there does seem to be support in Charlton for both of them. Right. I mean, the, uh, the town meeting yeah. voted. Right. So yeah. that's where you get your... Well, why wouldn't you? It's really not impacting. I mean, yeah. it has some impact, but, yeah, but really, no. you know. Yeah. It's like, um, we're going to build a landfill, and we're going to put it on the border of the town. <laughs> you know? Not that this is a landfill. This is much different, but impacts but adjacent communities... You know it's it's huge it's thing. an issue for us yep. now the, the attorney that we hired is he going to be giving us some guidance I've sent him the information he reviewed the traffic engineering in the letters that we prepared on your behalf and at this point there's really not a legal issue for him to get involved in I can ask him to prepare a brief with some information if you would like I can have him at the next meeting if you'd like uh, it's up to you all on what you really want to do going forward what's your role what input do you want to have um those kind of things well I, well it's kind sure, of chicken yeah, and egg yeah, I know, mean, and I'm kind of sure of you know we, we certainly want to know what we can and cannot do mm -hmm. for sure so i'll reach out to him and yeah. see if he can either attend or prepare a brief on right. what your options are for both facilities right nice. and, thank you okay and he's got the report right from he has everything yeah. that we have so far okay Anything else, Jamie? Anything? That, that makes sense to me, Mary. Just thank you back from our thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Next.
We have consideration and possible action on the appointment of Joanne Dupree to the Cultural Council. Jeff? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Dupree um, has been involved in the farmer's market for a few years and approached me about joining the Cultural Council. She's here this evening. In the back. Uh, I th think she'll be a great member and uh, I'd recommend or I'd appoint her and I'd ask you to confirm the appointment. Okay, anyone have any question or comment? I agree, I think she'll do it. I know you're very devoted to that farmer's market and put a lot of time and energy, so we appreciate it. Our residents just love having it. And for such a long period of time, all the way to October, so. Um, I'll make the emotion, motion that we approve the appointment of Joanne Dupree to the Sturbridge Cultural Council for a three-year term. I'll second that. Discussion? All in favor? Five. Okay, wonderful. Okay, congratulations, congratulations and thank you. We'll get the clerk to visit with you about getting sworn in and all that you there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we, next we have consideration and action on the confirmation of the appointment of James Louiakis as labor driver in the Department of Public Works. Which? It does. Good. Yes, well, I'd like to introduce you to James, James Louiakis. He's a longtime service resident, still lives here in service, which is always good for us. Yes, I know James from third grade. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I say that a lot in here, James. <laughs> Okay, any questions from the board? Okay, Jamie. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll make the motion to confirm the appointment of James Dacus as driver laborer in the Department of Public Works at a starting wage of $20.53, contingent upon completion of pre-employment requirements. Okay, is there a second? I'll second that. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, five to nothing. Good luck. Congratulations, James. Enjoy. Okay. okay, next we have consideration and possible action on the resignation of Joni Light. That's unfortunate. Ms. Light was a great member of the Personnel Committee and Finance Committee. Right. But she and her family have relocated to Connecticut. So um, there's a, now a, a vacancy on the Personnel Committee which is another one we'll have to uh, put on the list of. Yeah, yep. Okay, questions or comments? Motion? I'll make the motion to accept Joni Light's resignation from the Personnel Committee with regret. Second. Okay, discussion? All in favor? No, you, you skip D. Did yeah, you? Well, I was just gonna, yeah, I was gonna let. No, well, D, D has to come off. Come off. Roger that. Please. Yeah. Oh, geez, we're getting removing day. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. It's, uh... I thought that was in an email. What? It wasn't that in an email? Might have got missed. Yes, but we. Oh, no, but I mean that we were taking it off. Yeah, it's fine. It's. it's yeah, it's just, yeah. just a matter of timing. It's all about the timing. Okay, consideration and pox possible action on auction items for the Department of Public Works. Which comments? <laughs> uh, not much to say. It's just some very old equipment. We have an old stone plate compactor, an old wagon pump. The compactor's from the 1970s. We have a, a plow that's been sitting in the woods for years. It's all rusted out. We're going to get rid of that. We have a jumping jack, which is another type of compactor that they, they can't fix it. They can't get parts for it for the solar. And then we have this interesting uh, drill press. You see that? That is, <laughs> that is very old. Vintage. We're thinking we might actually, if we could track the right eye, we might make a few thousand dollars. Should have brought it to Brimfield this weekend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no one's going to want to haul that home in their little red <laughs> wagon, though. That's the problem. We couldn't pick it up. So we <laughs> anyway, if we get those on auction, we get those out of the way. Okay, questions from the board? Somebody want to make a motion then? I'll make a motion to approve the disposal of the items by auction. Second. Discussion? All in favor? 
K5. Thanks, Butch. Thank you. Take care, Butch. Okay, next uh, consideration, possible action on a hawker and peddler license for Lee Karimi of Southwestern Advantage. Hi, would you like to come down, please? Oh, that's okay. <laughs> we don't bite usually. So, do you still live in Lincoln, Nebraska? Yes, I'm actually a college student from Nebraska. I'm just out here for my summer internship. It works like a giant exchange program, so I get to stay with the host family in Southbridge this summer. Oh, oh that's nice. Yeah. Okay, do you want, just for the folks at home, do you want to tell them what you'll be yeah. walking in Pedman? So, they're educational resources. So, it's books, websites, and apps to help out with first through 12th grade for like homework and studying. is We're not with the schools or anything like that, so that's why I tell families when I sit down with them. But they're just resources, kind of like cliff notes or like teacher's manuals to help out at home just to make homework and studying easier. And there's also educational resources for like the little guys. So from seventh through pre-K, like two years old, a year old, they're gonna be more of like reading resources. I've had teachers take a look at them and they're more of like a learning system that grows with them rather than something that's more of like, here is a level one reading book, but something you can use for the next like five to 10 years, which is pretty cool. And then our websites and apps go hand in hand. We're partnered with people like Homer, National Geographic, McGraw-Hill, Princeton Review. So we also have SAT and ACT prep, which is awesome. And then our uh, websites and apps go hand in hand with all the books. Okay, thank you. Questions? I just have a couple. It sounds great. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of parents out there that are, that are going to welcome it. It's very ambitious, so you're going to do it for about five weeks? Um, so so it would be... July 12th. Well, from July 12th. So you didn't start yet, right? No. Okay, so we could probably just change the date on the 12th to whatever day we're going to start. To August 20th? Well, it actually be August 13th, 14th. Because I actually head back to Nebraska because I'm a senior at the University of Nebraska and I'll be starting classes on the 23rd. So I'll be in Nashville, Tennessee, where our company is located by August 15th. Okay. Just, just so that the license is accurate. So are you going to as many neighborhoods as you can or? Yes. So I'm going to try my best to skip over any empty nesters or folks that don't need help with early learning or homework mm -hmm. just so I don't have to um, but you're going, uh, I'm just, you're going you unannounced. You're not going because they called you to come. To, is that correct? All right. My only, my only um, suggestion in terms of getting support is we had a similar, well, we, get, like we recently, no, no, we just recently gave another license of this fashion for something totally different. <laughs> and I would just request that you do wear a face mask when you go to the houses. Yeah. And um, if you can tell us what when you plan to to go because there's no hours on the license okay um what i do is i start from 7 59 in the morning and i work till 9 31 but after 8 p.m i'm working more appointments so during the daytime i'll be like setting up appointments that way after eight o'clock people are expecting me to come back and it's not like i'm just knocking on their door and they're like who are you waiting they'll be like oh chase is expecting me and then he's like okay cool i know well is gonna be stopping by my house at this time and it's not a surprise. Yeah. And the same with the morning time, setting so, you know, up the morning appointments. That way, families are expecting me. But at eight o'clock in the morning, it you could be unexpected, right? Um, I'm, I'm just out. I just want to get a sense. So for like my first day, yes. Okay. Um. After then, they're like, no, I'm expecting you. And then I also have a Facebook business page. So what helped me? I've actually done Brookfield, Brookfield, Wales, and Holland. Is I have families who repost my. Um, social media posts. That way it's like, hey, Leah's going around. Like, if she knocks on your door, just give her five minutes. I just get college credit for showing you is what I'm doing as well. Nice. So I, I, my only thing is, um, I think it's fine if you're announced at 8 o'clock. I personally think 8 o'clock is a little bit late to go unannounced. Exactly, which is why 8 o'clock at night. Oh, 8 o'clock at night. Yeah. So, 
I would say what we did last time is I think it was six o'clock. I'd go to seven unannounced, but after that, I just think that's too late to go unannounced to neighborhoods. Great. Particularly, people are still very cautious, especially you're going to be targeting, you know, student age kids who haven't been vaccinated. And I'm just like not comfortable eight o'clock. I don't know how the rest of the board feels for unannounced visits. What do you want to set for a time frame, just so we can? I, I think I think um, unannounced, like six o'clock, like we did for the last, um, and okay. eight o'clock for appointments is fine because they're expecting you. Yeah. Um, if you want to make a motion, you put that in it. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion that we um, grant it approve an application for a hawker and peddler's license to Aliyah Karimi? Correct. Oh. Um, for a period of time from July, what's the date today? Today's the 19th. 19th to on or about August 14th. Unannounced visits from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and by appointment um, after 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, and mask? subject to wearing a mask at all times. And also contingent on paying the license fee, and getting your photo and fingerprints done. Uh, fingerprints are done. I have the photos in my binder, and I have money to pay. Nice. Okay. Good. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Five. Good luck. Good luck with it. Thank you. Thank you. And safe travels back to school. Yeah, good luck with your senior year, too. And do I make like, the police to contact me for like the actual permit or, sorry, I just... Um, Alex. <laughs> okay, next on the agenda we have old business. COVID update, Jeff. Yes, uh, we still don't have any indication of when the county funds for towns and non-functioning counties will be released. Uh, last week, one of the uh, other town administrators, excuse me, it's wet weather and my allergies are driving me crazy, um, inquired of uh, the Department of Revenue. They still don't have direction on when or how to release those funds. So we are still in a holding pattern on any non-revenue replacement type programs. We are developing a list of potential things. And as we got the question at the last meeting about our own vaccination lottery, we are allowed to do that under the Treasury guidelines. Yeah. So as we move forward and we look at potential uses for these funds, that can be on our, in our basket. Oh, very good. Okay. Yeah. That's yes. what I have. Okay. Any old business, Chase? Um, I do just want to bring up that last week, me and the town administrator met with a group of uh, town employees and the principal of Burgess about the Burgess field conditions. And uh, it was a productive meeting, and I think Jeff did a really good job in the meeting. He kind of took control, facilitated it really well, and I, I thought it, it went good. And we're going to have another meeting, and we're going to keep pounding the drum here. So. I'll come to you guys back with a good. They can come up with their money. We're all set. That's it. <laughs> Mary, any old business? No. I have none. Jamie, any old business? <laughs> and I have none. Okay, new business, Ian? I do not, no. Mary? No. Chase? Jamie, new business? No new business. <laughs> and I have none. Um, just if I may. Jeff? Um, the offer of the right of first refusal, you've gotten comments back from both the planning board and now open space was on the dais this evening. Uh, I think conservation is taking up the issue tomorrow evening. Uh, and the Board of Assessors met this afternoon, so we should have everything wrapped up by the second, second. at least in terms of whether or not we go forward with the public hearing. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Correspondence. Chase? Mm. All right, July 6, 2021, notification to a butter request for a determination of a applicability 
WPA Form 1 Shell Oil Company, U.S. Inc. Notice from Megan Proya, Senior Engineer and Edward Contos III, Principal Environmental Scientist from Groundwater and Environmental Services, Inc. to Jeff Bridges. July 7, 2021. Proposed multi-level system design for BR5 Southbridge Sanitary Landfill. Letter from James McQuaid, Section Chief of the Solid Waste Management Program for the Department of Environmental Protection to Jeff Bridges. July 12, 2021. 2021 Tree Trimming and Mowing Program for 78 Fairview Pond Road and 10 Shattuck Road. Letter from Kerry Deal to Jeff Bridges. July 13, 2021, Pilot Travel Center notification of availability of a Phase 5 status report. Letter from Ian Coles, Project Manager of Sovereign Consulting, Inc. to Jeff Bridges. July 13, 2021, Charter Communications, upcoming changes and sign up to go green. Letters from John Mahard, Director of Government Affairs to Jeff Bridges. Okay, any other correspondence? Okay. Okay. Approval of minutes. We have minutes from July 6th. Anyone have any corrections, additions, deletions? Okay, is there a motion then to approve as written? So moved. Second. Discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Okay, four and one abstention. Okay, next we have Citizens Forum. Yes, it's for the people at home. We can hear fine. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. Um, so, um, my name is Christina Reedy. I live um, at 14 Karen Road. And my question is, I know that this is a their project, and I've attended a few meetings, um, but I just had a, a quick question about it. So, formerly, my address was considered Lot 8. So across the street from exactly where I live, I believe I'm actually, of all the lots, there were eight lots that Tom Moss developed. Um, Lorraine Herbert was our realtor. I think I'm the last of the original who lived down this road. Um, I think 70 Cedar Street was considered lot nine. And so when we were moving to Sturbridge, this was back in 2001, um, one of the considerations obviously was developments that were gonna go in potentially around us. And so there were just a number of instances where we were told by Tom and also Lorraine um, that that land across the street from us was donated by, I believe the Karen family, I'm not, I'm not positive, but was, was to be donated to conservation to the town of Sturbridge that wouldn't be developed. So I guess my question really is just, and I did mention this at the, um, the senior center meeting that was held last week, and they, it sounded like maybe this was the first time they had heard of this, but the question was just that if they had looked into that, because when I believe the engineer was presenting his information, he mentioned that they didn't see any restrictions on the land. So it was just something that I, I feel like maybe because of, I'm a, one of the last original owners down on that, on that road that maybe no one else maybe knew about that. Um, I was just curious if anyone had been able to look into that yet. Hey, Jeff, could you answer that? Or? Yes, we, uh, the day after that meeting where that comment came up, Robin researched the deeds. There are no deed restrictions on that property when it was de uh, claim, uh, deeded to the town. There's nothing in the deed that restricts its use. Okay, that's great. But it was good, good of you to bring it up. Right. Yeah, and who was Tom? You said Tom and Lorraine. Tom Moss. Moss. The Young Lorraine. Oh, the builder. So I believe the builder purchased a all of the land that um, part of the deal or you know purchasing and developing yeah. those eight lots was to donate lot nine to the town so i'm pretty sure that's when the service acquired it but we just weren't, weren't sure i it's got to come in the deed if there's restrictions yeah. 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 So, yeah so no thanks for looking into it i appreciate i appreciate them looking into it so thank you yeah thank we you. will be having a uh, uh, show you heard the discussion yeah, yeah. we'll be, we'll be we'll having be. public hearings where you can yeah, because you know, voice your concern or have other questions and yeah there, there's a whole process and yeah. we learn a lot at public hearings and the public also learns a lot yeah. at the public yeah. hearings yeah. okay thank you okay no other public um is there anyone on the public line on the telephone that would like to address the board of selectmen is there anyone on the telephone line that would like to address the board of selectmen that's it. 
Okay, so next on the agenda is a request for an executive session. Chase, you want to read the motion, please? Yes. Executive sessions per MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21.3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body, and the Chair so declares. So declared, and we will not reconvene in open session. Sure. So you we, make that motion. I'll, a second. Uh, I'll second that. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> you could do all the voting. That's right. <laughs> Ian, how do you vote? Yes. Jamie, how do you vote? Okay, Mary, how do you vote? Yes. Jace, how do you vote? Yes. And I vote yes. You want to stay here or go in there? Uh, just a matter of moving Jamie from one mm, to the other. Stay so here we, if it's easier for him. Stay here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we just have to okay. get rid of the people. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. No, ex <laughs> executive <laughs> sessions. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. And the sun's still shining.